Hi, I'm Sachin from the TensorFlow Lite team, and I'm here to talk about delegates. Before I go into the details, I would like to go over some of the basics of what delegation is. Typically, a user would start with a TensorFlow model and use a converter to convert the model into the TFLite format. This TFLite file would then be handed down to our interpreter, which runs the model on device. By default, models run on the CPU, so the interpreter would call out to our CPU op kernels that are highly optimized for the ARM Neon instruction set. However, most devices these days, especially mobile phones, have a lot of other chips like mobile GPUs or DSPs. And this is where delegates come in. Our delegate API acts like a bridge between the TensorFlow Lite runtime and lower level accelerator APIs. For example, uh, our NN API delegate acts as an interface between TensorFlow Lite and Android's neural network API. Or the GPU delegate uses OpenCL and OpenGL to run inference on mobile GPUs on Android devices. A natural question here is why would you use delegates at all? The most obvious benefit is faster inference. Uh, the classic example here is the GPU delegate. Uh, because of the highly parallelized nature of the GPU, it is very good at performing matrix math, such as convolutions or fully connected layers. As a result, when we use our GPU delegate with TensorFlow Lite, we observe up to 7x speedups with a lot of the vision models that are currently used on mobile devices. Another great benefit is lower power consumption. A good example here is the DSP, or the, or the Digital Signal Processor. Uh, DSPs are meant for applications such as multimedia and communication, uh, which inherently require less power consumption. So when you use a DSP for inference, it consumes up to 70% less power, which is what we observed when we used our delegates that, can, that leverage Qualcomm's hexagon DSP to run even some of the mobile optimized models, such as the MobileNet or the MobileNet SSD. Now suppose you have your own secret accelerator and you want to use our delegate API to write your own delegate. Let's see how it would work in code. So the bulk of how the interpreter delegates nodes is in this function that we like to call delegate prepare. This function gets a context uh, an object called the TFLite context, which is essentially an interface into the TensorFlow Lite runtime for the delegate. Using the context, the delegate first gets the execution plan, which is nothing but a list of nodes that are going to be executed in sequence. For each node, the delegate can look at different kinds of information, such as what orbit executes or what are the types of uh, the input uh, tensors or the shapes. This helps the delegate make an informed decision about which ops it can accept to be delegated. Once this list of supported nodes is populated, the delegate calls a function called replace node subsets with delegate kernels. This function takes two main arguments. One is this list of supported nodes, and the other is what we call the kernel registration. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's look at what the runtime does when the delegate calls this method. Here we have an, a simple example of a model uh, with add and mul ops. And let's say our delegate only supports the add operation. So once the delegate calls this method with the nodes, the runtime partitions all the nodes into two subsets, or two, part, two types of partitions. One is delegated, and the other is non-delegated. Now there are two reasons why this happens. First is many of the delegates uh, optimize inference by fusing a lot of the ops together. So this way, the delegate can maximize the fusings and fuse as many ops as possible. Another great reason is that it's very expensive to go back and forth between the CPU and the accelerator, especially due to memory transfers. And therefore, the less the, num the number of partitions, the more optimized the inference becomes. Once this partitioning is done, the TensorFlow Lite runtime replaces each delegated partition with one single delegate op. At this point, the delegate op behaves just like any other TFLite node for the runtime. And the behavior of this delegate op is what is defined by the kernel implementation, or the TFLite registration that we saw in the previous slide. There are two main methods that need to be implemented for this kernel registration. For the first one is init. This method is 
run at initialization time. That is when delegation is happening. Here, the delegate or the delegate kernel gets a list of delegate params, which is essentially a node that it is responsible for, and input output tensors and information like that. With this information, the delegate is free to initialize any opaque object that it can create. The return type is void star, so the, the runtime is completely agnostic to what type of object is returned, as long as it is not null. Then, at inference time, we run this method called invoke. In invoke, the kernel gets back the object it returned during init, and it is free to do whatever it wants to, as long as the implementation is semantically similar to what the delegated partition would have done. Now that we know what happens under the hood, let's look at some of the delegation options in TF Lite. The first delegate that we have is the NN API delegate, which uh, supports a lot of different accelerators, such as the DSP, GPU, and NPU across a variety of vendors. It um, runs on Android P and above. It supports more than 30 ops on Android P and over 90 ops on Android Q. This is one of the very few delegates that accepts both floating point and integer models. This is how you would typically run inference with the NNAPI delegate using our Java interface. The main idea is that uh, you initialize the delegate instance and you pass it on to our interpreter. Uh, and the rest of your business logic remains pretty much the same. There's not much else you have to do for delegates apart from just this, these couple of lines of initialization and cleanup at the end. Then we have our GPU delegate, uh, which, as we mentioned before, gives up, up to seven times speed up on a lot of the vision models that involve a lot of convolutions and fully connected layers. It uses OpenCL and OpenGL on Android and Metal for iOS. Currently, it only accepts 14 point models, both 16 bit and 32 bit. We are working to add welcome support to the GPU delegate, as well as inference for quantized models. So stay tuned for that. This is how you would do things with the GPU delegate. Uh, the thing to note is that apart from the class name, which is GPU delegate instead of an API delegate, everything else pretty much remains the same. Uh, we are excited to announce the release of the Qualcomm Hexagon DSP delegate that we announced uh, a couple of weeks back. This delegate provides up to 25x speed up for quantized uintate intate models. Uh, our general directive is to use this delegate on Android O and below and use the NNAPI delegate on Android P and above, or in environments where you may not have an the Android operating system. Uh, we are working with Qualcomm to add support for models which are per-channel quantized. So you can uh, make use of our post-training quantization tooling to run those same models with the hexagon delegate. Again, the inference is pretty similar. The only difference is now that you have to initialize the hexagon delegate instead of the GPU delegate object. We're also excited to announce uh, the core ML delegate, which uses Apple's neural engine to run faster inference on iOS devices. Uh, it uses, uh, it runs on the A2L SOC and above, and it provides up to 14x speed up on a lot of the mobile models that are used in uh, on-device inference. It is available on iOS 11 and later. This is how you would run the inference with the core ML delegate using Swift, which is the language of choice for iOS development. Uh, the basic idea remains the same, that you initialize the object, and then you pass it on to our interpreter with the rest of the logic uh, apart from the inference uh, remaining the same. Uh, of course, it's not as easy as taking any random model and giving it any delegate. Uh, you have to uh, think about a few questions before you choose a delegate to use with your model. So the first uh, consideration is whether the model is supported on the delegate. For example, if you pass a floating point model to the DSP delegate, nothing will happen. Or if you give the GPU delegate a quantized model, for now, it won't run. Uh, it won't crash, but the, the delegates, if given a model that it doesn't support, will simply reject all the nodes, and everything will run on CPU. So there'll, no, there'll be no uh, improvement to performance at all. The second question is about the trade-offs. 
For example, uh, a lot of the fixed point model, uh, fixed point delegates, such as the DSP delegate, tend to sacrifice a bit of the accuracy to gain a lot of speed. Uh, this is because of reasons like using lower bit accumulators or uh, fusing a lot of the operations together. So you, if your, if your uh, application requires a, a lot of precision, this might be a problem for you. Or with the GPU delegate, there is an overhead in RAM usage during initialization time. Also, all of the delegates come with some binary size associated with them, except the NNAPI delegate which, sh which ships with the TFLight runtime by default. So you have to keep an eye on the binary size increase when you use the delegate. All these numbers are provided in our documentation, so be sure to check it out before you apply a delegate. Uh, and the last question, obviously, is whether the delegate actually improves performance. Now, this depends on a lot of different factors, uh, such as supported ops. If there are a lot of unsupported ops in your model, there'll be a lot of hops between the CPU and the uh, accelerator, which will result in more latency sometimes. So you have to take care of which ops are in your model. Another uh, factor is whether the environment supports the delegate. For example, if you give the core ML delegate uh, a model on a, an old iPhone, it might not do you any good. Uh, but the good news is that we have some tools to help you to figure out which delegate to use in any given environment for your model. Uh, we have our favorite benchmark model tool, which is used for latency profiling on Android devices. So you basically build the uh, binary using Bazel, and you push it to the device, and then you can run it to get a lot of statistics about latency performance. This is kind of the output that you get with the, uh, the tool. It tells you whether it applied the delegate, and then it gives you a bunch of statistics uh, about latency in microseconds. It also sometimes tells you about the CPU memory usage, so if that is important for you, you can check that out. Then we also have uh, the inference diff tool that we released recently, uh, which is basically a way to compare CPU performance or CPU accuracy with the accelerator's performance. So what it does is it runs the model uh, in two different uh, environments. One is a CPU and the other is the accelerator. Uh, and it, this, it does this for a bunch of runs with the random data, and it compares the output tensors at the end. The result looks something like this. Uh, where you get a structure of output errors for each output tensor. So if you know what your output tensors mean in your model, then you have a good idea of how close the, the accelerator performance is to uh, the CPU. And we also have our recently released profilers for Android, which are a great way to dig down into how model behavior is seen on Android devices. Let's take an example. Suppose you're using Perfetto, which is an, a great tool for Android debugging. Uh, you see that you have delegation occurring, but you also see that the latency is higher than what you would typically expect. Uh, you zoom in, and you see that there is a fully connected op which is running after the delegate. And you know that your delegate only supports one partition, so it cannot delegate that fully connected op. You dig in further, and you see that there is a squeeze op between the delegate partition and fully connected, which is causing this problem. So if this op was supported on the delegate, then the entire thing would run in the same partition. And this is a real example of ResNet with our GPU delegate. So if this squeeze op was substituted with a reshape op, the entire thing would run on the GPU delegate. So this is how you can use our profilers and a tool like Perfetto to figure out why performance might not be what you expect on an Android device. Uh, in the works, we are working in the next coming months on better tooling for delegates for you to figure out how and why performance is different from what you would expect. We're also working on improved performance across all our delegates and improved model support with ops and different kinds of models, such as floating point and quantized models. And we are uh, also working on revamping our documentation so that you have better support for using and writing your own delegates. Um, that's all. Uh, we can look at our documentation on light performance delegates to, for all things delegates, the different options, and how to write your own. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at tflight.org. Thank you. Mm -hmm.